Interest in natural gas vehicles is growing rapidly in the trucking industry. Since so many customers are making the switch from diesel to natural gas vehicles, we would like to take the opportunity to concentrate on you, the driver, and everything you need to know when operating a natural gas fuel vehicle. Today, we will concentrate on the Cummins Westport ISX 12G. I am Mario Sanchez, and I'm joined today by Christopher Madais, Cummins Westport. Chris, Hello, how are you? Good. Um, so excited that we get the chance to talk about the ISX 12G from Cummins Westport, manufactured by Cummins and supported by Cummins. Let's begin talking about the fuel. What can you tell us, Chris? Mario, as you mentioned, the ISX 12G runs on natural gas. The natural gas can be stored on the vehicle in two forms, mm. compressed natural gas, CNG, or liquid natural gas, LNG. In the CNG system, the fuel can be stored the pressure is up to 3600 psi. As the vehicle is operated and fuel is consumed, the pressure will drop back down towards zero. The liquid natural gas storage systems are look much closer to a diesel fuel tank. The fuel is stored in a liquid form at negative 250 degrees. It's very cold, obviously, and the tanks are insulated mm -hmm. to keep that temperature inside. And then the fuel system itself will actually convert the liquid back to a gas before it is sent to the engine. Here's the fuel gate. Let's open it and talk about the components underneath, Chris. What can you tell us? Okay, Mario, this is a CNG system. Uh, there's a couple components here I want to point out. First, you just have a on-off valve. This turns the fuel on and off. Mm -hmm. And then we have several fill receptacles, a small fill receptacle and a larger fill receptacle. We'll talk about these a little more uh, in the near future. And then you also have in this system a high pressure gauge. This gauge actually shows you how much pressure is in the storage vessels on the CNG system. Some of the trucks actually have a, a low pressure gauge or an engine supply pressure gauge. These gauges read about 120 PSI in most applications. Chris, let's talk about the refueling process, starting with CNG. There are two separate ways you can fill. One is a slow or time-based fill. The other is a fast fill. I'll start with the slow time-based fill. This is for applications where you return home every night and the vehicle has time to sit uh, for four or eight hours. Uh, you typically will use the small uh, receptacle mm -hmm. and when you get back in the evening, you will plug the, plug the vehicle into the system and overnight it will gradually raise the pressure of the tanks. And this is typically common where you have multiple vehicles parked in one place and the, overnight the entire systems will uh, raise back up to their 3600 PSI uh, net pressure. With the fast fill system, it's much like your diesel fuel or gasoline pumps today. Uh, you pull up to a station, mm -hmm. you connect to either a small receptacle or a large receptacle, uh, depending on what the station is equipped with. Mm -hmm. uh, and the system will pressurize the tank uh, relatively quickly uh, at a rate of 10 to 15 gasoline gallon equivalents per uh, minute. The system is trying to fill to 3600 PSI. It is temperature compensated, so as the ambient temperature changes, mm -hmm. it may increase or decrease that, what we call net fill pressure. But you, you'll equal out to have the same amount of natural gas on board. Chris, let's talk now about refueling with LNG. Okay, with the LNG system, we are putting a liquid on board the truck, as we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So you will see pressure gauges on the fuel system, but that does not determine when it is full. There's actually level gauges mm -hmm. in the dash of the trucks that say when the system is full. There is a safety standpoint with LNG because it is so cold. Uh, gloves and face shields are required uh, when fueling the vehicle. And it is safe. The system has a cam lock feature. It has two handles that you actually press down on the tank and squeeze together uh -huh. so that okay. it's, it's interfaced well and it can't leak. Uh, so the, the safety stuff is just for your protection. Chris, what is this r big red valve for? Uh, Mar, this is a fuel shutoff valve. Uh, both the LNG and the CNG systems have some type of fuel shutoff valve. This is to separate the fuel system from the engine and vehicle if maintenance uh, or service is required. Mm -hmm. So by shutting this off, you you know, prevent any fuel pressure from getting from the tanks to the engine. Okay. Uh, you can do your maintenance and service, and then at the end, you can turn it back on, and it does not require you to drain the tanks, either the LNG or CNG. You can leave the fuel in them while you're maintaining the engine. Chris, what will be a couple of key takeaways for our drivers? The first one is it's a simple process. 
after you fuel either a CNG or an LNG vehicle a couple times, it will be as common to you as putting gasoline in your passenger car mm -hmm. or diesel fuel in your truck. Uh, the second is safety. The natural gas we use for transportation is the same gas that's piped into most of the homes uh, we live in. The fuel actually has a chemical in it that creates an odor if we actually create a leak. Uh, this is called mercaptan and it smells like a, it has a rotten egg smell to it. Uh, and if the gas does leak, you'll instantly smell it on the CNG system. On an LNG system, the mercaptan would freeze at the very low temperatures it's stored at. So this, the manufacturers actually install several methane sensors throughout the vehicle so that if there is a gas leak, the sensors will detect it and alert the driver um, through a visual and audible alarm. Chris, thanks. All very valuable information for our drivers. Let's go and take a look at the engine. So we have here the ISX-12. Um, for our drivers, uh, how can you tell whether this is a gas or a diesel? Mario, the engine is mainly the same. About 80% of the parts are common between the gas and the diesel engine. Obviously, there's a few key differences. Uh, on the gas engine, you'll find an ignition system with spark plugs, and also the fuel system is different. We do not have injectors. We have a fuel control valve and throttle plate. <clears throat> and then the air handling system is a little different, but very similar to the diesel engine. Now, as far as uh, maintenance, is there anything particularly different for the gas engine versus the diesel? Uh, there's a couple key things that we want the drivers to be aware of. First of all, the engine oil. The, both the ISX-12G and the ISLG use a special gas engine oil. The gas engine oil is designed specifically for natural gas automotive engines. Coming standard is CES 20074, uh, and this is unique to the Cummins product. Uh, so please talk with your maintenance guys and make sure that you are, you're getting the proper engine oil for this engine. Uh, second thing, uh, fuel filters. You will notice on this truck there's a couple fuel filters here. These fuel filters are supposed to be drained daily. They collect both uh, moisture from the fuel and uh, oil that may come in the pipeline or from the compressor. Uh, it's very simple. You can reach down here open the pet cock a little bit, uh -huh. you hear gas coming out, you blow out any liquid that's in there, and then you close it back up. That's it. That's it. And this truck, you do want to drain both. The fuel flows through in parallel, so you do need to drain both. Some of the applications may only have one, um, but the ISX-12G does have two filters. Very well. Now, um, the engine characteristics, is there um, anything that the driver should be concerned or aware being very different compared to a diesel? Now, for the most part, everything is the same. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, with lots of common parts here. The cooling system and the oil system are all the same as a diesel product. Mm. So you will see very similar oil pressures and coolant temperatures that you're used to seeing with your diesel engines. Wow. Chris, thank you. All very insightful information for our drivers. Thanks again. Thank you, Mario. This is a good opportunity to meet our next expert. I would like to welcome Jason Owens, Customer Performance Manager. Jason, good to have you. Hi, Mario. Thanks. Um, at this point, I would like for us to spend some time talking about what the driver will experience in the cab uh, when driving a natural uh, gas fuel vehicle. Okay. Let's get in the cab. Sure. Now that we're in the truck, I'll go ahead and start the engine. The diesel vehicles have a diesel particulate filter lamp, a high exhaust temperature lamp, and a def lamp. We don't use any of those lamps on our gas vehicles. We do have one different lamp, however, that is the low fuel pressure lamp. And I'll demonstrate that by shutting off gas to the engine. When I do this, first we'll see the low fuel pressure lamp come on, followed by this check engine and stop engine lamps. And on this particular chassis, a warning chime will also engage. From a driver's standpoint, the compression brake switches are in the same position that they would be on a diesel chassis. In this truck, you have a unique display that tells the driver how much fuel is left in the tank. It lists the percentage of fuel as well as the fuel pressure. However, some chassis may elect just to have a simple gauge that tells the driver how much fuel is left in the tank.
We've talked about what the driver will see, now we'll talk about what the driver will hear. The gas engine is much quieter, and you'll hear things like the air compressor, when it's pumping, make a distinct knocking noise. We don't hear that on diesel engines because they're much louder. You'll also hear something that we call turbo chuff. Turbo chuff is a reaction between the compressed air in the system and the throttle plate. As we change throttle pedal position or go from a loaded position to a motoring position, we'll hear a distinct chuffing noise. This is a reaction between the compressed air in the system as it hits the throttle plate. This is perfectly normal. I'd like to provide some tips on how to maximize fuel economy. For the ISX 12G, we like to spec the engine to run between 1400 and 1500 RPM at a 65 mile an hour checkpoint for a line haul application wanting maximum fuel economy. In addition, we use features like idle shutdown and road speed governor to minimize unnecessary idle and to keep the truck's speeds in the sweet spot to maximize fuel economy. In addition to road speed governor and idle shutdown, we have additional electronic features such as gear down protection, which is designed to keep the driver in the proper gear for maximum fuel economy. We also have load based speed control, which is a progressive shift feature that encourages the driver to go to the next higher gear for maximum fuel economy. Using all these features in concert can give the fleet a 3 to 5 percent fuel economy advantage depending upon duty cycle. Natural gas engines like to run at a little bit more RPM than their diesel counterpart. This is due to the turbocharger we use and the engine's 1200 RPM peak torque. When using a manual transmission with the natural gas engine, I really see no difference at all. Throttle tip in and tip out is the same and shift timing remains the same as a diesel product. With an automatic transmission, the only difference that I see is a slight throttle lag at tip in. But other than that, driving an automatic transmission in a natural gas product is identical to its diesel counterpart. Jason, thank you for that insightful information. Sure, Mario. And we want to thank you, driver, for watching this video. And thank you for your confidence in comments.